OK, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to hydrocorrect our terrain for better 2D random mesh simulations in HECRAS. If you're performing a random mesh simulation, then it's going to become important for your terrain to be hydrocorrected. And what I mean by that uh, hydrocorrection is that the terrain is able to correctly route flows through your mesh. Now, practically what this means is that where there are bridges and culverts that allow flows to pass under embankments, uh, we're going to create openings in the terrain to allow flow to pass through without having to overtop uh, those embankments. Now, depending on the source of your terrain, uh, it may have some hydrocorrection already in the data set. Um, in this example terrain that we're working with, we already have some hydrocorrection for the larger watercourses, uh, but for the smaller waterways, we do not have hydrocorrection. So you can see here, we've got a waterway that passes under uh, a couple of bridges here, and you can see that in the terrain, there's already been some hydrocorrection applied, meaning that there's an opening um, that allows water to pass through. So this is uh, hydrocorrected for this water course. But in other areas, we can see um, where there's smaller waterways or, or roadside ditches, that water is going to uh, pond up and, and collect against the embankments here, when logically we can infer that there is likely a culvert that passes underneath the, uh, the roadway embankment here and allows flows to move through uh, to the other side. So one way we can actually diagnose this in our model is to simply run a random mesh simulation and uh, pull up the, the depth grid from that result, uh, take our model simulation and move it out to the end of the simulation when water should have drained through all the areas and see where water is ponding or collecting in your 2D mesh. You can see at various areas where water should have drained out, water is kind of stagnant and, and left on the mesh. These are areas where you're going to want to uh, check for hydrocorrection and, and see if there are areas where you can make any modifications to allow water to route through your mesh. So we can see here that we've got a large area where water is, is pooling and ponding up against a roadway embankment with no way to pass through unless we give it a way to pass through. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually perform a terrain modification to hydrocorrect uh, the terrain file here so that our 2D rain on mesh simulation will allow water to pass through. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a clone of our terrain simply by right clicking on our terrain file. We're going to select the clone terrain option. And what this is going to do is this is going to create a duplicate of our terrain file that we've given it without making an actual copy. And so while that's important is that then you're not um, creating a separate terrain file. You're just creating a, a clone of that original terrain, which saves on space within your 2D model. So once we've got our clone, clone terrain set up, we're going to expand that, uh, open up the modifications, right click, and we're going to add a modification. Now you have several options for modifications. Uh, you can add a shape, and this would be commonly used if you're going to be adding some piers and want to simulate a, a bridge simulation and, and put some terrain modifications in that way. You can also create polygons, a specialized shape to modify the terrain. Um, for this example, we're going to use the lines uh, modification and you have two options for a terrain modification using lines. You can create high ground if you want to create like a levee type feature or some barrier for water to not move across or you can create a channel. We're going to create a, tr a channel which is probably the best uh, tool for uh, hydro correcting a terrain and we're just going to give that the name channels and what you're going to be able to do then is draw lines anywhere you want to basically enforce a channel uh, into your terrain. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in this area where we're presuming that there is a culvert uh, across the roadway embankment. And we're going to just draw from uh, roughly low point on one side of the structure to low point on the other side. And that's going to open up your ground editor, ground line editor. And it's going to ask for some different options. Uh, for the modification method, we want to use the lower terrain value. So this is basically going to pick up the low elevations on either side and use that to interpolate a channel across. And we can set a bottom width. We can set uh, slides, side slopes. 
and a maximum extent width. So for this, we're going to start with a 20 foot maximum width. We'll say the bottom is uh, 10 feet. And I'm going to turn off the, um, actually, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to turn off the original terrain so we can see this a little bit better. So this is us looking at the clone terrain. I'm going to adjust some of the visual parameters here. And we can see what the hydro correction looks like. Um, in our clone terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the ground modification again. So we can see if we change some of the parameters here, like if we give this a smaller bottom width, five foot width, you can see it changes the shape of that channel. So right now it's a trapezoidal channel here. And we can see the ground that's been removed. The brown line is the uh, original ground elevations of that line. So you can see the roadway embankment here. Uh, we're looking at a profile view of this line, and the pink line is showing the modified uh, elevations if after we apply the um, the modifications layer here. So you kind of have to approximate what the opening should be for some of these um, culverts that pass through. 20 feet is probably too long. I'm going to say maybe a 10 foot opening here. So we've got a, a small opening for which water can pass through this embankment, uh, basically using this trapezoid channel. We can make it a square channel if we want. We can increase the bottom width, and that will basically make it a um, a, uh, a square channel uh, with uh, vertical side walls. Um, we can do that. We'll do that for now. Let this be the modification. Uh, then what we want to do here is we want to make sure that uh, we reset our geometry association. So previously, our Geometry was run on the original terrain. We're going to make this uh, to run on the clone terrain. And we'll save that and we'll run our model again and check up on our results. And once we've rerun our model on the modified terrain with the hydro correction here, we can look at our results. So if we select the maximum grid here, we can still see that we're getting a lot of inundation behind this area. But if we um, change the simulation length and look at the end of the simulation we can see that all the water that was previously stuck here well not all the water but most of the water that was previously ponding up against here has now found a way to route through the system across the embankment here and downstream now it is important to note that um because we just applied a terrain modification anywhere in your uh, 2D mesh where you're relying on the hydro correction in place, you're not actually simulating culvert or bridge hydraulics there. You're just allowing water to pass through. Um, this is important for uh, the rain on mesh simulations because you don't want water trapped on your mesh that's uh, really going to, uh, in, in reality, drain downstream and contribute to your drainage areas. But if you are looking for um, accurate results, you know, behind areas where you have hydro correction, you're going to want to actually know a little bit more about the actual structures in place. How how large is the opening? How much area does it have to flow through, um, whether it's a bridge or culvert, so that you can simulate those with some more detailed methods. But if you really just need hydro correction just so you can route flows through uh, your embankment and contribute downstream, um, then these techniques can be helpful to um, to get your uh, terrain hydro corrected and allow water to drain through your, your mesh network more properly. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully uh, you learned something getting to see how to use these terrain modifications to hydro correct areas in your model uh, where you might need that. So leave a comment if that was helpful or leave a question if you want to know more. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this.